Well, we have Dr. Shannon Cox, a board certified radiation oncologist at Austin Cyberknife with us this morning. And he's here to talk about National Bone Cancer Awareness Month. Dr. Cox, you always bring great information to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Thank, yeah, thank you for being here. Let's talk first and foremost, Dr. Cox, about what bone cancer is, because I feel like it's not a term I hear very often. There are two kinds of tumors or cancers that involve the bone. The ones that originate in the bones are actually very, very rare. They're one of our uh, more unusual cancers. It's a primary bone tumor. A significant amount of those occur in young children. The, the more common one is tumors that have spread to the bones. And those, uh, the most common are breast, lung, and prostate. If tumors spread to the bones, they say, well, you know, your time is limited, uh, the cancer spread. Well, that's not necessarily true anymore. Uh, there are now oftentimes second or third line therapies that are actually even curative. There's a, there's a whole concept of oncology that's come up around in the last 10 or 15 years called oligometastatic disease. And basically, it's somebody that has disease that has spread to very few sites, and they're still potentially curable. The most common bone cancer is the one that is spread, and that person is not necessarily incurable anymore. So CyberKnife is able to really target those areas and limit the, the damage, uh, the bone, the brain, a, a lot of different areas. The other use of CyberKnife for, uh, for tumor is when it's recurred. And sometimes, let's say you had a large area where you radiated for the lung and it's recurred in a very small area within that. Uh, CyberKnife is very good for treating that smaller area. So in other words, let's say it was originally the size of an orange and now it comes back the size of a ping pong or a golf ball. Well, if you tried to do radiation again to that orange side lesion uh, area, it would be too damaging to the, to the normal tissues. Uh, so you can come back and, and radiate that smaller area within the bigger area. Well, Dr. Cox, you have answered about five of my seven <laughs> questions, but that's why we come to you. You're the expert. You can spiel these off. I'd like that you touched on CyberKnife, though, because obviously we want to talk to you a bit about that. I think it's really fascinating to talk to you guys about CyberKnife because so much has changed in the last couple of decades in the way that you guys can approach cancer treatment. So can you just give maybe the audience at home kind of an idea of what CyberKnife physically is? A very focused laser-like treatment that is able to spare the normal tissues in the appropriate type of cancer. It's absolutely the best for sparing any collateral damage to the other tissue. So it's a very focused it can come from many, many, many different angles. It's operated by a, uh, 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 it's a robotic arm uh, and operated by a computer. So it's very precise. Can you talk to us about some of the other benefits that CyberKnife has? Because you guys have really gone on a lot of these fronts and improved them. It's cancer specific. We can't treat everything, but there's, there's uh, a lot that seems to be uh, increasing every year, the number that we can treat it. We not only treat the dose that we think can kill the cancer, but we have to look at the tolerance of the normal surrounding tissues. And so CyberKnife is one of the best uh, treatments out there that takes advantage of that difference. And so uh, it can limit the normal tissues uh, while giving the higher dose to the cancer. Is CyberKnife good for treating re-irradiation? In the right cancer, the right situation. And one example is head and neck cancers. It's not uncommon for a head and neck cancer to come back two, five, uh, 10 years later and you're having to retreat within the area that was previously radiated. And frequently those either can be put in a long remission or even cured. Uh, and again, uh, it's very precise for doing that. It's very good for re-radiating within an area that's already been radiated. As we're starting to see things start to open back up, I think there are still concerns people have about whether or not a spot is safe. So let's just talk real quickly about how CyberKnife is uh, safely treating patients. How are you guys handling them at the office at this time? We're following all national protocols. And the other thing about CyberKnife, because we don't have as many people even in the waiting room as some traditional radiation, because each daily treatment takes longer. So we don't have as many people in the waiting room anyway. Even if we do use masks, we're using all of the, uh, the safety protocols, but uh, it, within it, it's a little safer because you don't have the volume of people you don't, that you do in other standard types of radiation. And I know you've got a team of doctors who have different specialties and you guys can communicate with each other about cases to give patients the best outcome. So we appreciate you taking a little time out of what I know is a very busy day for you. Thank you, doctor, so much for your time. We hope you have a good day.
Thank you. Austin Cyberknife is located on I-35 near the Del Seton Medical Center at the University of Texas. Call them at 512-324-8060 or go to austincyberknife.com for more info.